Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently released demo for Square Enix's upcoming Final Fantasy VII Remake, and seeing how it compares both visually and from a gameplay perspective to its 1997 source material. Now, before we get started, we should, in theory, expect to see improvements visually in just about every field. So, while we'll still look over the general visual overhauls that have been made, the main focus for this video will be on how the gameplay experience has changed, including the layout of the initial cinematics and starting mission. Much like the Resident Evil 2 remake released by Capcom last year, the Final Fantasy VII remake is much more than a graphical overhaul. The way the game plays is drastically different. But before we get into all that, let's briefly run through what Square Enix was able to accomplish visually, starting with the opening cinematic. For the most part, the cinematic of the remake follows the same general premise of the original 97 version, with an opening shot of what looks like stars smoothly transitioning to a shot of Aerith in a dimly lit alleyway. The camera work in this sequence is handled very differently, with a dolly shot helping to introduce Aerith more cinematically. In the original game, Aerith's introductory shot fades in from black, with no visible background, putting all the emphasis on the character and the mysterious green particles surrounding her. The remake takes a similar approach, leaving the focus on the character, but the lighting is more diffuse now, giving a more natural appearance. Aerith appears more realistic now, with more complex geometry, individual hair strands that all seem to react independently, and most importantly of all, more natural scaling for facial features, especially her eyes. The original game's characters appear more like anime characters, a convenient compromise that, while not realistic, has helped the game age remarkably well. But now, Square Enix is capable of taking full advantage of far more advanced technology, and it clearly shows, with detailed skin textures, diffused lighting, accurate shadow placement, and some incredible animation work. With these new tools, Square is aiming to really expand on this classic game's already immersive experience. And then, just like with the original cinematic, the camera zooms out to reveal a wide shot of the city itself, complete with the surrounding reactor towers and a nearly identical central structure, only with much more detail and increased scale. And while all these improvements to the pre-rendered sequences look great, it's the in-game visuals that are truly a massive improvement. Character models like the lead protagonist Cloud look like actual people now, with arms that no longer appear like big meaty hourglasses, and actual fingers rather than big blocky hands. Cloud's Buster Sword is also now clearly visible behind Cloud's back, something that previously would only appear during cutaway battle sequences. Speaking of which, it's important to note that in the original game, character models looked much better during the actual battle sequences, where the action was limited to trading attacks with enemy combatants in a turn-based action style. During these sections, Cloud is a bit less blocky and features a bit more detail that matches up more closely with what he looks like now in the remake. Though his iconic purple outfit has been tweaked slightly to appear darker, and, just like with Aerith, the new motion capture techniques have added significantly to his character's personality during dialogue sequences. Every character in the game has received this sort of treatment, with all the most important details being preserved in order to maintain that classic aesthetic that fans have come to expect from the game. Though there are a few minor changes that I have noticed, like the first few guards you run into at the train station, that are now just standard soldiers with reworked outfits. They still sport a similar color configuration, and there are three red lights on their headgear. But the helmet is less exaggerated, and no longer hangs over their head like it did before. Other enemies appear to look roughly the same as the source material, though I'll be sure to take an even closer look when the game officially releases. Next, let's talk about the environment. Obviously, because we're talking about just the opening mission of the game, we are limited a bit here. But there's still quite a few interesting changes worth pointing out. First off, much like the classic Resident Evil games, Final Fantasy VII was built with pre-rendered still image backgrounds to create a more compelling environment to explore. The characters are then dropped on top of these backgrounds using forced perspective to create the illusion that the player is walking around a reactor complex, climbing up and down ladders and setting a bomb. And while this was a cool technique then, technology has evolved significantly since then, and Square Enix's remake features fully rendered environments, all based heavily off those old pre-rendered designs. The areas feel both familiar, yet entirely new at the same time, thanks to iconic landmarks being faithfully recreated and linked together in roughly the same layout. What's interesting though, is that certain areas have been expanded in order to accommodate the reworked gameplay mechanics. 
Previously, players would traverse narrow corridors and paths only to have the game pull them randomly into a large battle arena. In order to capture all aspects of the original game, the remake faithfully recreates both of these aspects and melds them together, with junction points to things like catwalks featuring similar large square arenas with enemies to fight. They're not quite identical, but they do capture the spirit of the original and feel consistent with the format of the mission structure. Now, when taking a much closer look at the environments, there are a few interesting changes. The one that really stood out to me was the elevator scene, that not only looks completely different, but now features a new cinematic. This likely suggests that we'll get more of an expanded backstory to many characters this time around, along with a more compelling conflict in the narrative. There's also a few more instances where Cloud hears the mysterious voice in his head, though we never hear the voice ourselves in the remake. Outside of those two minor narrative tweaks and the redesigned elevator, the opening mission looks practically identical. And sadly, the demo cuts out after escaping from the exploding reactor, so we can't take an in-depth look at the surrounding areas. But I'll be sure to cover that in even greater detail next month when the game releases. Lighting is another area where the remake benefits significantly. With pre-rendered backdrops in the original game, rendered lighting effects were simply not necessary. But with the remake, the worlds now feature much more advanced lighting-based effects, with volumetric properties and reflective surfaces. These effects help to give the remake a different style and mood than before. The train station, for example, previously appeared like a well-lit station only occupied by a few people. In fact, the station's so well-lit that it's hard to picture that the action's taking place at night. The remake, however, makes the nighttime setting perfectly clear. The station is now dimly lit, with long shadows being cast by the guards on duty and several visible spotlights throughout. There's also some nice specular lighting to help highlight the wet surfaces throughout the area, adding even more personality to the dark, industrious setting. The effects have of course also been improved, with more detailed explosions and lots of flashy new particle effects and scripted destructive sequences to really help sell the game's more cinematic approach. But this is all to be expected. It's been decades since the original game released. So, the real question now is how does the remake differ in terms of its general gameplay design? Well, if you're a diehard fan of the churn-based tactical gameplay of old, you won't find that same experience here. Final Fantasy VII Remake is now more of an action RPG, allowing players full control over characters in their party during combat. Now, you can enable a classic mode that lets you focus on choosing special attacks and items while the AI takes over the basic attacks for you, but the intended approach for the gameplay is now much more hands-on this time. Combat is handled more like a hack-and-slash game in the remake, with players needing to press the square button on the controller to perform simple attacks, while simultaneously juggling item usage and magic attacks using the in-game menu. This feels almost exactly like the combat in more recent Square Enix titles like Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts. It's incredibly intuitive and handles great, though when the action switches over to Barret, the controls do feel a bit off, mainly because of the new camera work. The first section that lets you use Barret has you shooting upwards at turrets, that now appear at specific positions rather than just spawning in the middle of the floor like in the old game. You can target enemies and shoot your arm cannon just fine, but the camera likes to clip through objects and make it difficult to focus on what you're doing. As the game continues to open up, this will undoubtedly be less of an issue, though adjusting the zoom levels may help a bit with this. As far as using items and special attacks goes, the remake basically takes everything that made the turn-based combat so great before and reincorporates it into a more involved experience. It's still very much an RPG, so you'll still have those moments where your player level will cause you to miss targets at close range, and you're going to need to carefully time your attacks. But you're also in control of dodging and memorizing enemy attack patterns now, which becomes especially clear with the first boss encounter near the reactor. The mechanical scorpion has been given a massive overhaul to its attacks, with an AoE ground attack that dissuades strikes from cloud, and several ranged explosive attacks that require either blocks or well-timed evasions. When not in combat, players can explore much larger, more open-ended environments. While the areas resemble the original game's locations, there's more paths throughout, along with plenty of secrets to uncover and new obstacles to overcome. Speaking to NPCs has also been altered slightly. The game defaults with subtitles on, but you really don't need them this time. Every character is fully voiced now, and you're not stuck cycling through text boxes or even choosing your own name. Everything happens more seamlessly in-game, without pulling you away from the action. 
with more advanced options available in the pause menu for players that want more information. Overall, the gameplay changes make for what feels similar, but is ultimately a drastically different experience, and one I'm excited to explore more come April. Finally, let's wrap up with a sound comparison. Which game do you think has the superior audio design? Get down here, Merc. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, based only off of the first hour or so of gameplay, Square Enix has outdone themselves. The Final Fantasy VII Remake is really shaping up to be another excellent reimagining of a classic 90s title, that not only improves visually with enhanced character models, lighting, environments, and effects, but also reworks the gameplay to keep it fresh and interesting for both new and old players alike. Encounters like the Scorpion boss are longer and more fleshed out, with a much more satisfying conclusion. One of the biggest questions regarding this remake is how they plan on squeezing an entire game out of what was only a minor fraction of the original experience. But considering this introductory mission alone took nearly an hour on a standard blind playthrough, it's becoming more clear what we should expect when Part 1 releases April 10th. And I'll be sure to provide more coverage of the game then, with a more in-depth comparison along with a final review. But what do you guys think so far? Are you liking the changes Square Enix made to Final Fantasy VII? Or does the classic remain untouchable? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.